I'm really excited because we finally get to play with the 2024 Lexus GX 550. And this one is really special because it's the Overtrail, which is the new off-road focus model. It's got 33 inch tires instead of the 32 inch tires that the other ones have, 18 inch wheels too. So there's some decent sidewall. There's some great off-road running gear underneath. And of course, a fantastic new look. The new GX is available in three basic trim levels, and each of them has a plus package that adds more goodies. Uh, the premium is the base model rides on 20 inch wheels. The luxury, of course, is the luxurious model, and it's on 22 inch wheels. And the Overtrail, which is what we're in, this is definitely more off-road focused. It has more clearance, it's taller, all of that. Uh, it also has multi-terrain select, downhill assist control. It has a locking rear diff. It has EKDSS. It has a lot of that kind of off-road gear that's kind of like a TRD off-road package in the Toyota world, which really leans into the GX's popularity among the off-road set, which wasn't necessarily something Toyota really expected when the GX first came out. It was pretty much a standard, you know, mall cruiser type of uh, SUV that had off-road capability, but none of the original owners ever took them off-road. That's not gonna be the case with this one. You've heard me talk about EKDSS and KDSS is kinematic dynamic suspension system. Land Cruisers have had that for a while. GXs have had that for a while. My own Forerunner has it. But what's new is the E at the front. So the old system was kind of a passive hydraulic system that looked at the front and rear suspension in a purely mechanical way to determine if the, the vehicle was rolling in which the stabilizer bars needed to be in effect or if you're in a frame system a twist situation which the stabilizer bars were going to be a hindrance. This system operates differently and it allows the front and rear stabilizer bars to release like that independent of one another which is what's making it more smooth as we go through a lot of these obstacles and ditches because the front stabilizer bar can unlock while the rear one stays you know together and then uh, when the rear axle gets to the same obstacle it unlocks in, in turn and so that keeps it much smoother because there's just more intelligence to the system so in the past if we were looking at a gx engine it'd be a v8 the 470 the first generation had a 4.7 liter v8 the 460 had a 4.6 liter V8. This is the 550, so of course it has a 3.4 liter twin turbocharged V6. Now, it makes 349 horsepower, which is 48 more than the outgoing V8, and 479 pound-feet of torque, which is a full 150 pound-feet more than the 460 made. On top of that, the torque peak is just 2,000 RPM with this engine, which is a full 1,500 RPM earlier than last year's V8. This thing really pulls, and it's got a 10-speed automatic behind it instead of a 6-speed. One of the things I really like about this new truck, and it makes me wonder why it always hasn't been this way, is when you put it in low range, the torsion center differential doesn't just automatically lock you can still leave it unlocked and then choose to lock it when you want to. And that's a huge benefit because if you get to a tight corner, uh, it's not gonna bind if you've left it open. That's something that wasn't possible before because for some reason they decided putting it in low range meant they should lock it. But no, <laughs> this is better. <laughs> Thank you.
So there's more to the GX's styling than how it looks. From the inside, this little low spot in the middle of the hood really opens up the visibility forward along the trail. And this strong character line, well, it's lined up pretty much even with the center of the tire contact patch, so you can easily place your wheels. Now, on the overtrail, the wheel and tire package has a little bit different offset, so the track width of this is wider than the premium and the luxury versions, which is why it has the extra bit of fender flare here. I really like these mirrors because they don't stick out that far beyond the fender flares, which means you can negotiate narrow trails really easily and not get all hung up in the brush. These mirrors are proportioned like those of an FJ Cruiser and they stand away from the door so that you can see the trail or the road through this slot. And then of course, the way this character line cuts down lower than the hood gives you excellent visibility towards the trail out the side. It's just really good from a visibility standpoint while off-roading or parking in a parking lot. So the really horrible grill of last GX is gone and it's replaced by this. Couple things to note here. One, the over trail has a skid plate under there. It's optional on the other trims. This piece in the middle is replaceable independently of the side. So if you manage to bash this up off-road, you don't have to buy a whole new piece. All GXs have running boards and these fixed ones are on the over trail. On the Luxury Plus, there are automatic ones that deploy from underneath the vehicle when you open the door. This roof rack is something you'll only see on an over trail and it's one of two reasons why the over trail is taller than the Luxury and Premier models. The other reason being the 33 inch tires that add a little bit to the height and give it a little bit more ground clearance. The big news at the back is that this is no longer a side opening barn door. It's a traditional hatchback, but at least it has an opening window that allows you to just reach in and grab something quick. This cover is concealing the standard receiver hitch and plug for the trailer wiring that all GXs have, the over trail is rated for nearly 9,100 pounds, which is significantly more than last year. So this is the off-road information screen, and there's a lot on here. Uh, you can see pitch and roll. You can see that my center and rear differentials are currently locked. If I turn the wheel, you can see the wheels turn, and it shows that I'm in low range in rock mode. Now let's say I want to disconnect the differentials. Well, the rear switch is right here next to the range mode switch, the transfer case switch, push that. And after a second or so, the rear differential will unlock. Of course, it doesn't ever do it on cue. There it goes. Now we'll do the same with the center differential, which is new this year. Uh, and boom, now we're totally unlocked and that means I can make really tight corners and there won't be any binding even though I'm in low range. So uh, yeah, pretty neat to see all that. And then if I want to see cameras to see what's going on underneath. I press this button and now we can see uh, the terrain to our sides. If I get too close to a bush, uh, it'll start to show up over here. Uh, if I uh, decide, well, I want to see through the hood, I can push this and I get a transparent hood view, which now takes the camera information and iterates it back to project, it remembers what it's seeing and then shows it when it's passed underneath. It's really an interesting bit of software processing. And then of course, if I go into reverse, uh, I had the reverse camera, but I can also push the same button eventually a other button and get to uh, the transparent view of the rear which is really quite impressive 
Off-roading like this isn't something everybody does, and even the people who do it don't do it constantly. So on-road performance absolutely matters. So we're gonna check that out too. So the premium that we're in now is one of six trim levels. There's premium, premium plus, luxury, luxury plus, overtrail, overtrail plus. The premium and the luxury are both three row SUVs. Now the premium has 20 inch wheels and the luxury has got 22 and nicer interior appointments. What about the overtrail? It's a two row only, there is no third row. And that also means that its cargo capacity with the rear seats folded is even better because the rear floor is lower because it's not trying to be some seats. Other differences between the trims include the suspension. In the premium, premium plus, and luxury, you get passive dampers that aren't adjustable. In the luxury plus and both overtrail models, they're adaptive variable dampers. So here we are, we're on the freeway, we're cruising along with the passive dampers and it feels just fine. It's nice and smooth. You know, we were on a crack road a little while ago and you could feel a little bit of the cracks. I mean, this isn't a unibody SUV, it's a body on frame. And you know, that gives it the towing and off-road performance that it has, uh, but you do give away a little bit of supple on-road ride. But I gotta say, it's not bad. It's a pretty decent ride for all that. So we should talk about drive modes. This one has three, eco, normal, and sport. If you move up the ladder to the point where there's variable suspension, you get Sport and Sport Plus and Custom. And uh, so that allows you to, and also Comfort. So that allows you to take full advantage of the adaptive variable suspension. You know, you don't have a locking rear differential and you don't have like mud, sand, and rocks mode that the Overtrail has. So, you know, you can think of the Overtrail as like the TRD off-road version of this if this was a Toyota, which it's not kind of is, kind of isn't, it's a Lexus. So you know what I'm saying. Yeah, so this is just a very nicely equipped daily for people who might go off-road but aren't gonna be, you know, too hardcore. Go skiing, sure, no problem. Tow a trailer, absolutely. Premium Plus, there's a reason why it's gonna be the number one selling trim. impressed with the 2024 Lexus GX 550 more than I thought I would be. The 3.4 liter twin turbo is really powerful. Uh, it's a, a smooth cruiser on the freeway and this overtrail is great off-road. I mean the the new EKDSS system, the way it disconnects the front and rear stabilizer bars independent of each other as opposed to the tied together way the old KDSS system worked. It's amazing, it makes the off-road ride so much smoother and with less head toss. And then of course you've got the locking center and rear differential. You've got all the crawl control and multi-terrain select things that comes with this model. It's really impressive from the standpoint of exploratory off-roading and overlanding right from the factory.